The U.S. Uh, state that lost 20 of its children in a school massacre last December has just passed its own sweeping new gun control laws. About an hour ago, Connecticut gover uh, Governor Daniel Malloy put his signature to legislation that passed with bipartisan support. It adds more than 100 guns to the state's list of banned assault weapons. It also bans ammunition magazines with more than 10 rounds. What's more, it requires background checks on all gun sales, including those at gun shows. And as we mentioned, it had the support of state Democrats and a number of Republicans. What happened on the 14th, which sort of precipitated what we're doing here, rattled us to the core. And every one of us in our own way said we're going to do everything we can so that never happens again. So no mother ever has to bury their child because of gun violence. Connecticut now with the governor's signature will have the strongest gun safety laws in the country. And there you heard from some of the lawmakers. Connecticut becomes the third U.S. state to enact tougher gun laws since the Newtown massacre. New York and Colorado have also put new restrictions in place. But take a look at this. Since the Sandy Hook school shooting, 13 U.S. states have adopted or may adopt laws that weaken their gun restriction, restrictions. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. Craig Lamolt is with us now. He's a senior reporter with radio station WSHU in Fairfield, Connecticut. And he joins me now via Skype with more. What are people in Connecticut, the mood, if you will, among ordinary Connecticut citizens on this day that this new gun control legislation has passed in their state? Well, Connecticut has been a state traditionally that's had some of the strongest gun control measures in the country already. Uh, traditionally, when uh, people have been polled in Connecticut, there's been remarkable support for gun control measures. And I, I think a lot of people were looking for some kind of action in the wake of what happened at Sandy Hook. Yeah. Uh, they were really looking for something. Uh, there are certainly plenty who are angry about what happened, who are gun uh, supporters and, and gun owners. But I think a, a lot of people in the state are quite happy with the action that's been taken today. But, you know, is it just symbolic? I mean, is it just to say, hey, look, we're doing something? Because after all, the Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre was carried out with legally purchased weapons. That's true. It was uh, with legally purchased weapons, and uh, it was, it was uh, Adam Lance's mother who owned those weapons. You know, I think there is a, a, a large symbolic statement here, and I think people have said for a while that no law is going to prevent all incidents like these, but uh, Connecticut lawmakers said we have to do something, we have to take steps to make a difference, to try to do something, and, and that's what they've done here, and they actually had broad bipartisan support in the steps they've taken. Whether it can prevent something like this from happening again, it's really impossible to say. And also the other thing about the United States, since we're speaking to our international viewers here, is that you may have tough laws in one state. I mean, for instance, I spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. They have some of the toughest gun control laws in the District of Columbia. But a U.S. state is surrounded by other states that may have weaker gun control legislation. So in the end, can it really make a difference? Well, that's absolutely true. Uh, you know, one of Connecticut's neighbors, New York, of course, uh, beat Connecticut to the punch, in effect, uh, in passing really strict gun control legislation in the wake of Sandy Hook. So, at least on that side, uh, there are strong laws as well. But, yeah, people can bring guns in from out of state. I mean, the law here that they've passed today does bar people from bringing these banned weapons into the state, but there's mm -hmm. certainly nothing that is uh, prohibiting them from, from you know, getting across the state lines. And uh, also, what was interesting to me, and it, it seems like it happened also in Colorado as well after the uh, Aurora uh, movie theater massacre there, that there's been actually a jump in gun permit applications in uh, Newtown, Connecticut, uh, because of people might be fearful perhaps that some of their right to purchase assault weapons would, uh, would be uh, negatively impacted by all of this. Yes. That's absolutely true, and it's not just in Newtown. Yesterday, as the Senate and the, the House in Connecticut were debating this measure, I went around to several gun stores in the state, and I talked to people in the gun stores. One store that I walked into, there was a guy who had uh, a speakerphone, and he just kept heading redial, and he was trying to reach the state office that gives authorization 
four gun purchases and he mm -hmm. couldn't get through. The line was completely busy and it had been busy for days and he said there were thousands of people who were trying to get new permission to get guns in the state legally. And finally, uh, this again is within the context of sort of how the world sees the United States. I mean, I think people uh, see the gun violence problem in America two ways. One it's a, is availability uh, of weapons, okay? And then the other one is perhaps cultural. The fact that it is perhaps seen as more acceptable to, to handle, uh, by some people, to handle disputes and other things with gun violence. I mean, is that fair to say about the United States? Is that why it's so high in terms of number of murders with guns per capita? I wouldn't say that's necessarily fair that Americans think if I have a problem I can just solve it with a gun. However, there is a strong history of gun ownership in this country and when I visited some of those gun shops yesterday, that's what people said, that these guns were not about hunting in, in this case, the assault rifles that, they, that are being banned here. They say it's about protecting your family and that, you know, there are strong, there are places that are nowhere near. Uh, nowhere near police, you know, and it could take a long while for people to respond, for police to respond to an incident, so people feel the need to be able to protect themselves with weapons. Having said that, there's a lot of people who do not feel that, and in Connecticut is a state with a lot of people uh, who are supporting gun control legislation today, uh, and, uh, and that's going to be a debate that's continuing, not just in Connecticut, but around the country. Okay, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Greg Lamont, a senior reporter with WHSU, joining us live from Connecticut here on CNN International. Thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us today.